Okay, now the B20V tag or LSV tag, the configuration that's given hundreds of people good power, awesome reliability, and trust me, I've seen people build B20V tag that make crazy power. We're about to show you the basic steps on how to convert your B16 head or GSR head to work for a non VTEC block like a B20 or a B18 LS. And of course, as you know us, on our video, we're going to show you something cool, something extra, and some tech to share. So you know you're going to enjoy this. And of course, a lot of good things are in store for you on the video. And the information about LSV tag is all over the internet. So we figured we'll make this video that includes everything every single thing this way you can just go back to this for a little bit of reference whenever you feel like it and of course for the newcomers or the young ones they get the right information and the correct information and go forward correctly <laughs> Okay, and first we start with the dowel pins. On the B16, it's on the exhaust side. Look, see that? And here we plug it in here for the oil line, but later on that. And you can see here on the B20, the dowel is on the intake side. Here, it's supposed to be here and here. Whereas on the B16, it's on the exhaust side, as you can see, right? So what we do here is Bong taught me this. We actually drill, re-drill the dowel to the exhaust or to the intake. This way it fits for the CRV head gasket. Okay, we plug this and this for the oil line. We use a 1-8 NPT thread tap. We use NPT because it's tapered, so when you tighten it, it gets sealed really well, right? We actually tapped this earlier on so I can show you guys with just my bare hands. Or yeah, my hands are that strong. I can tap it with my hands. Just kidding. Okay, so now you can see it's tapped and we're gonna plug it with an Allen plug with a 1-8 NPT Allen plug. Let me show you that. And by the way, this dowel trick that we do makes you not need but to buy a Cometic gasket for LSV tech or CRV tech. This would let you run a P3F or a P8R CRV head gasket or for an LSV tech, an LS head gasket. No need for Cometic. I mean, don't get me wrong, a Cometic head gasket is really good, but if you're gonna save a few dollars, I'm all for that. And also, if you're not in the US, sometimes it's hard to get it. All right, here's the 1.8 NPT pipe plug. It's an Allen, all right, here it is. So we're gonna show you. Of course, we're not gonna install it permanently yet because it's still yet to go to the machine shop. So we're just gonna show you guys how easy it is to plug it. And of course, some people would say you have to put a, a little bit of sealant and all that, but this is a tapered thread. So the tighter you go, the more sealed it gets. So it's fine, but it doesn't hurt to try it if you want to, but we don't. So we just grind this off because it's still above so that when you resurface, it gets fine or all flat. You can have the machine shop resurface it with that, but they will charge you more because this is steel plug. Right, we're gonna remove it. Now, onto the dowels. We'll have my colleague re-drill the positions and show you guys the end result. All right, let's go. Oh, uh, yep, let's go. Had good breakfast, so I'm strong, yeah. All right, now, you can hear my colleague brooming the debris, okay? Finish drilling the dowels, okay? Let me show you guys, here's the dowel. The stock one is on the intake side, or exhaust side, and now it fits here, right? See? Now it's like a non V tech, but of course, this goes to the block. So we move that, we show you the dowels. Okay, now we have to carry this again. One, two, three, huh, then bring the block. Let's go. Okay, now here we get the dowels in place 
on the intake side we're gonna put this here and here all right and now we're gonna lift the head and put it on the block wait up let me get it all right it's here now wait oh it's usually easier when the engine or the block is on the engine stand because i can stand over it and look at the head stud holds to see if the dowel is aligned but in this case i can't it's on the workbench just to show you guys so i'm taking a while but it's fine there's no head gasket nothing there's no not there's no damage that's gonna happen or occur okay wait oh, oh the block is moving wait up oh beautiful sound all right yeah okay now we're gonna align this perf perfectly so that you can see it better okay now i have to fix my cell phone or my iphone 6 to align this properly hold up let me fix the stand all right now we remove this for the vtech oil line for the vtech line or however you want to call it we remove this we actually loosened it earlier, you know, on the other videos that you've seen. Some use this part, but the problem with that is when you over tighten it, it cracks. So it's a crappy place. Whoever puts that there is crappy. All right. Now we're going to show you where we route the lines. Okay. We, may, we have this steel braided line locally made at the local hydraulic shop. You know, we don't choose the rubber oil line because it expands and the cost of the steel braided line is not that expensive. So, you know, that's fine. And we use a T bracket to, re to relocate or at least be in place for the oil pressure sender or sending unit and then the oil line. Okay, wait, let me tighten this. Oh, it's hard. It's a swivel, but it's, you know, because it's locally made, it sometimes gets hard. Okay. Oh, let me just spin the whole line. Yeah. Like a skipping rope. whoop T, whoop T. All right. Now, you see, it's tightening up. Wait. Some more. All right. There. Okay. And then we put the other side onto the oil sending unit location and then you put the oil sending unit or the pressure sending unit on top of it on the t of the fitting this way it doesn't even you know disturb the intake manifold the intermediate shaft or even the oil filter now here is the overall look see it actually looks clean and if you think about it the oil line or the routing of the oil line is not really restrictive or no unusual bends and whatnot. And by the way, the fitting near the cylinder head, we have we have it turned as an L. This way it avoids the intake manifold. So, you know, we hope this gives you a lot more ideas and doing a better version of B20 VTEC or CR VTEC or LS VTEC, whichever name you call it. Look, you can see it's a turn, it's turned into an L by the head. This way it, it avoids any possible restriction or contact with the intake manifold or even the fuel rail line, everything. So this looks clean and actually this is how jasper ecu later's ef is lined 12.5 proven actually let's drop in a p30 intake manifold that i have here to show you guys all right now we're gonna install the p30 to show you guys notice the l bracket or the band it's an l this way it avoids the coolant lines the bypass hose and even the fuel rail this way, when you install the fuel line, it's not hard. Look at that. Looks good, right? And it's actually, you know, it's not constricted or, you know, restricted because of the bend or alignment. And look, there's space for the oil filter. It doesn't affect it. 
even the intermediate shaft. And here is the sandwich plate, you know, because some people prefer this. And you can actually run this and there's no problem. It'll, it's equally good. But some people tell me they prefer to run this because it filters the oil before it clogs up the VTEC solenoid or the VTEC solenoid gasket. But when you think about it, if you're worried about that, you got big, bigger things to worry about. To have debris clogging the VTEC solenoid, you got to start worrying about your rod bearings. You know, that will finish first. Look at the oil line. It's actually routed really well. So when you think about the radiator hose, the fuel lines, all avoiding the, the restriction or the contact. Remember this manifold. Imagine if we still had this, you know, we just bolted onto the B16 head over the block. Oh, we can imagine that's going to be looking good. And it's actually going to be really enticing to actually continue building it even better, right? And that is what I do here. Whenever I'm building an engine, I take a look at it and how it seems or how it looks. And it gives me more ideas and more ideas to do better. So, hey, that's fun. And since, you know, in this channel, we always try to do you guys one better. Let's try this. We put the lights or LED lights underneath and turn off the lights and look. Yay. It actually looks really good, right? And wait, let me turn off the workbench light to see if it's going to be even better. Ooh. Well, it's actually too bright, but you know, now it looks like a scary movie, but that's really, really cool. Yeah. Now let's move the phone around. Oh, sorry about the glare. You can see the glare on the screen. But look at that. Now that's a consistent port, all four of them. And you can see that's good work, right? Oh, yeah. It looks really good. Like the business end of things. Okay, let me turn on the bench light or the spotlight first. Yeah. It actually looks really really good it gives me more drive to do things good but imagine if this manifold was still here oh man it will be so fun to put this on the engine right now and see all that look at that it's so clear and so good actually this helps when you look at it with the intake manifold that you're porting it gives you a good visual of the whole intake track intake tract all the way into across the valve into the chamber and actually you know, it gives you a lot more ideas or better understanding and look you can look at you can see the bore here we zoomed it look at that and look at the bowl on those pores they look really really good right yep so you know that's gonna flow really good and you know as i mentioned about the ported ITR manifold this one is actually owned by Zef our friend and you can click up here for his video and his group is called Illegal City Car Club if you remember on that video I mentioned and they actually did a good event lately they have a friend or a group mate or teammate that has a B20 VTEC with just the YCP pistons and only CTR cams type R cams but take note it runs 13.5 that's crazy fast right and the thing is they're actually planning to redo the engine because they actually got it as is from a fellow friend or something and they actually want to improve it even better and you know what i figured if they're gonna get another block if it's from here why not send it over here and i could preset all the clearances and all the bearing clearances and all the other tricks that i could do and not build it as a crate engine for them no i'll disassemble it and still send it as a kit engine this way their tuner which is also their builder could actually build it and i could give all the steps and all the torque ranges and all that this way it's gonna be an easier way to share some of the secrets i'm willing to share for them to improve their best time and of course 
the manifold is also a type R that's not ported, that could get some help, right? Or at the least, the very least, the manifold should get ported so they can actually, you know, improve to 13.4 or 13.3. But hey, if you think about it, if I get to do what I just said, I think 13.3 is easy.